starting with the name of Allah who is the most beneficent and the most merciful dear students in the previous lecture we have been studying about writing research proposal some of the part was left and we are continuing the same further in this lecture you know, you know the research starts from research proposal whenever you want to uh, do your thesis whether it's your mphil thesis or your phd dissertation first of all you have to write or prepare a research proposal on the basis of your research proposals you can find or win any grant of scholarship to do your mphil or phd in some foreign countries because the because your research depends on how strong your research proposal is so be careful when you are writing your research proposal it should be perfect in all sense there are different parts of research proposal which we were discussing in the previous lecture the most important of those are introduction statement of the problem objectives of the study significance of the study research questions hypothesis literature review then research methodology you have to define your whole research methodology how you are going to conduct your research what res what data collection method you are going to use in your research how you would be analyzing your data what data analyzing analyzing or data analysis methods you are going to use in your research who would be the sample and population of your study and how you would report results findings and conclusion in the end you have to give a bibliography or reference in the apa format let's continue the lecture and learn the points which were left in the previous lecture in the first section that was about introduction in the previous lecture we have already discussed that in the introduction part of your research proposal you are going to add about the background of the study statement of the problem research objectives research questions significance of the study scope of the study delimitations of the study and assumptions of the study and definition of key terms till scope of the study we have already covered in the previous lecture and now we are going to study about the delimitations of the study first of all it's important for you to understand the uh, the difference between limitation and delimitation a limitation is actually any kind of lack in your research that is not in your control say for example you have collected the data but some of the respondents did not cooperate with you it's not in your hand you cannot handle it you cannot uh, so such kind of uh, problems are the limitations limitations are actually not in your control and delimitation is that you delimit your topic yourself you narrow down your topic you make it specific say for example you are writing a literature review of your thesis then you would explain 
how much literature review you are going to add in your research project say for example last 10 years last 20 years or last five years you would specify and you would give reason why you are doing that and what is your research who would be the sample and why you selected that sample why why you limited it why you delimited it you have to explain it well in your research so that nobody asks uh, any question about it from you later on actually in delimitation part of the study you you inform the reader that you are going to delimit your study to some extent and why you are doing that let's study here what's written a limitation identifies potential weaknesses of the study think about your analysis the nature of self-report, your instrument, instrument is the data collection tool that you use for your, uh, for, for the data collection in your, in your research. The sample, think before threats to internal validity that may have been impossible to avoid or minimize as I have already explained it in simple words to you. And a delimitation addresses how a study will be narrowed in scope, that is how it is bounded. This is a place of place to explain the things that you are not going to you are that you are not doing, that you are not going to address, and why you have chosen not to do them. The literature you will not review and why not. Say for example the obsolete the very old research you are not going to review and you would, would give the reason in delimitation part that I am going to uh, review only the literature of last 10 years or 15 years because this is the uh, that is the uh, most recent research the population you are not going to study and why not the methodological procedures you will not use and why you will not use them so in the delimitation part you have to give reason of everything why you are using a specific population why you are using a specific sample why you are conducting research on secondary level students why not on university level students or why are you limiting your population why are you limiting your uh, representative uh, sample what methodological procedures you are going to use and why you want to use them and what what data analysis method you are going to apply in your research you have to explain each and everything in the delimitation part of your study limit your delimitations to the things that a reader might reasonably expect you to do explain the reasons clearly why you are covering certain things and why you are ignoring some other things operational definition of key terms sometimes we use some difficult terms in our thesis or in our research it's the duty of the researcher that he has to explain or define the key terms say for example you are using you are students of English you are using ELT you would explain that ELT stands for English language teaching and if you are conducting study on MAL you would explain that it's mobile assisted language learning an operational definition is the demonstration of a process such as variable term or object in terms of the specific process or set of validation tests used to determine its presence and quality this section provides operational definition of terms that are usual or un unfamiliar that are, are that are unusual or unfamiliar it identifies precisely the names of concepts tests and participants introduced in the statement of the problem and employed in the hypothesis Properties described in this manner must be sufficient 
sufficiently accessible so that person other than the definer may independently measure or test for them at will here are the examples these examples are from some other subject i have already given, given you the examples of uh, linguistics and uh, english you can read them for your knowledge and then review of the related literature the review of the related literature provides the background and context for the research problem it should establish the need for the researcher and indicate that the writer is knowledgeable about the area we have already discussed a lot we had a complete lecture about writing the literature review here are some other things why literature review is important and why it should be written written and what is the significance of writing literature review in your research here you can read them it's very simple i am going to explain the things which need more explanation it provides a framework for establishing the importance of the study as well as benchmark for comparing the results of the study with other findings it frames the problem earlier identified in a proposal the research uh, in a proposal the literature review is generally brief and to the point be judicious in your choice of examples the literature selected should be pertinent and relevant select and reference only the more appropriate citations make key points clearly and succinctly so when you are writing your research proposal and you have to write your uh, literature review part you should be brief while writing the literature review and try to give the most recent the most recent works and the most relevant which are relevant to your topic here is the methodology section c is the methodology in your research proposal after writing the introduction part and then the literature review you are going to give the methodology you have to explain your research methodology very well in your research proposal in the methodology part you are going to include these points you have to give the design of the study population and sampling research instruments pilot study instrument reliability and validity method of data collection plan of data analysis let's have a look on them in detail research design design is a description of the approach to be used to reach objectives clearly indicate the methods of data collection either within a quantitative or qualitative methodology as well as the techniques for data collection questionnaires and measurements the validation of the techniques indicate whether field workers will be used to collect data and whether computer programs will be employed to analyze the data so in the research design you have to explain what data collection tools you are going to use whether you are going you are going to use a questionnaire or interview or uh, test what kind of uh, data collection tool you are going to use in your research and how you would be analyzing it analyzing the data population and sampling you have to explain very well who is the population who is the target population and who is the sample and how you have selected that representative sample for your study a population can be defined as including all people or items with the characteristic on one wishes to understand just a second a population can be defined as including all people or items with a characteristic one wishes to understand say for example the population is masters level students studying in pakistani universities 
in all over the universities in Pakistan. Population sampling refers to the process through which a group of representative individuals is selected from a population for the purpose of statistical analysis. Population is a larger group and sample is the representative sample. From the sample we have to get the questionnaires filled or we have to uh, get their interviews and then later we have to generalize the results on the total population. Say for example you have selected a sample uh, of uh, 50 students or 300 students from some universities following some specific uh, sampling technique and you have got the data from them and in the end when you are giving results you can generalize the results on the total population. You can say that in Pakistan students are thinking or students are using such strategies for learning English. Operators or instrument. Instrument is the data collection instrument. We also call it research tool like questionnaire or interview. In this section of the method section you describe any apparatus or instrument you propose to use in your research study. The following information should be included when you are writing about your research instrument or your data collection tools. Keep in mind these points and answer them in this part. One is general description of the apparatus or instruments, then variables measured by instruments, reliability and validity of the instruments, why the instruments or apparatus are used, reference indicating where apparatus or instruments can be obtained. So in this part you have to explain how you design the questionnaire or the interview, what are the major things or sections you have added in, in that, what are the variables, independent variables and dependent variables in your questionnaire which you want to measure and reliability and validity of instrument you have to explain in this part that how you validated your instrument, how it is reliable, is it already used by some researcher or not, why the instrument or apparatus are used, why you use this specific instrument for data collection, why if you used uh, a questionnaire for data collection, why you used it, why not you, why you did not use the interview. So you have to explain it, it in this part. Reference indicating where apparatus or instrument can be obtained. So you have to explain from where you got this questionnaire. Was it already used by someone? Did you get proper permission to use it? Or you have designed it by yourself? Data collection outline the general. Outline the general plan for collecting the data. This may include survey administration procedures, interview or observation procedures, include all explicit statements covering the field controls to be employed. If appropriate, discuss how you obtained the entries. So in the data collection part, you would explain how you would be collecting the data. Would you get help from some other uh, friends or you would be conducting you would be collecting the data by yourself and what procedure you would be following in uh, in collecting the data data analysis in this part you have to explain very well how you or uh, you would analyze the data a research proposal is actually uh, written for the research project which you want to undertake so proposal will be written in future tense and you would inform the reader that how you would be going to conduct this research, what data collection you would be using and what data analysis methods you are going to use in your research. Specifically the procedures you will use and label them accurately. Say for example you are using ANOVA or T-test or any kind of test you are applying for data analysis, you have to explain it in your research that you are you would analyze your data by using these analysis procedures 
on SPSS or eViews or any other pro, you know, software that helps in data analysis. So you have to explain it very well in your research proposal that how you are going to analyze the data and why you are using that specific tool for data analysis. You have to keep in mind the validity and reliability of your research at every point. Even when you are writing about, when you are selecting a data collection tool, your sample, data analysis method, you have to keep validity and reliability issues in your mind. And you have to explain it very well in your uh, dissertation or your thesis or your research proposal. Section D is about the ethical, legal considerations. Ethics of research we have already discussed. And section E, last one, is the time schedule. In this part of research proposal, you would give a complete outline that how you are going to conduct your research. You would give a complete schedule of your study telling the reader that by when you would be completing your study. Say for example, in the schedule you can say that the first two months I would spend on literature review and the next month I would spend on developing and refining the research instrument and data collection. After that one month on data entry on SPSS or any other software which you want to use for data analysis and then findings and conclusion and then one or two months on the write-up of your dissertation. So you have to give a complete schedule, time schedule that how you are going to complete this study. This section indicates exactly what will be done, the sequence of the var various activities and the product of deliverables that will be prepared specifically the tasks deliverables and schedule in some detail although there is usually some latitude for the offerers so whatever things are deliverable like you are using questionnaire as your data collection tool you have to deliver the questionnaire to to the concerned people to your sample selected sample so you have to mention it that how much time you would spend in it in preparing grant proposals there is more freedom to refine the to define the tasks in both cases it is important that the proposed task structure includes all the activities necessary for completing the project so when you are writing the time schedule in your research proposal it would be last part and you would mention each and every activity which you need to do for completing your research project and you have to mention the time that how much time you are going to spend on it planning a viable schedule for carrying out the tasks is often as important as developing a comprehensive list of tasks so giving a schedule or planning A schedule takes time you have to carefully decide that how much time you would spend on which activity and it should be achievable say for example you are specifying one month or two months towards writing the literature review you should be able to complete it in in your specified time here we are ending uh, we have completed the topic of uh, writing research proposal. I am giving you assignments now, which are practical assignments. By preparing assignments, you would be learning assignment would give you a practice time so that when when you in the next year, when you are doing your research, you should be independent researchers.
sometimes the supervisors give you time or sometimes they do not give you proper time and you would not be able to learn each and everything there so i'm giving you such kind of present uh, assignments now that you are practicing each and everything one by one and you would be learning when you are writing your when you are doing your research you are writing your thesis you would have no problem you would have no issue uh, while writing the literature review because you would have practiced a lot through assignments now the next assignment is the topic on which you have written your re uh, literature review you have to prepare research proposal on the same topic a complete research proposal as i have taught you it should be very well written and i expect no blunders in it you can discuss with one another in your groups if you do not understand anything thank you so much have a good day allah hafiz